Six years ago, in June 2011, I was working in my office at Mass University in Palmerston North when I received a phone call from the Department of Conservation in Wellington. The phone call was about a penguin. An emperor penguin had arrived at Pekka Pekka Beach, 70 kilometres north of Wellington. I had experience in working with emperor penguins and the Department of Conservation was asking me for advice. The next morning I drove down to Pekka Pekka. I went out onto the beach and was surprised to find television cameras, newspaper reporters, a crowd of people there. The penguin had been eating sand and clearly would not survive if it was left on the beach. So we decided to take the penguin to Wellington Zoo. I was the person who had experience in handling of emperor penguins and was given the task of catching the bird. We caught the bird, took it to Wellington Zoo, the sand in its stomach was pumped out and over the following days and weeks the penguin recovered. I was told that the penguin had been given the name Happy Feet and I thought that's a very strange name for a penguin, I had never heard of Happy Feet. Whilst Happy Feet was recovering at the zoo, there was a tremendous amount of national and international publicity about the bird. There were strongly expressed views about whether we should take the bird back to the beach, keep it at the zoo, perhaps fly it to Antarctica. We decided to release the penguin in the ocean to the south of New Zealand, and this is what subsequently happened. Clearly people are fascinated by penguins. Let's explore relationships between people and penguins and our shared environment. There are 19 species of penguins. 15 of these species are found in the New Zealand region, which in the bird world extends from our main islands through the sub-Antarctic islands to Antarctica. Eight species of penguins breed in our region. We have more penguins in the New Zealand region than in any other country. Today, we're going to have a penguin quiz. I'm going to ask you to identify three of our species of penguins. I'm going to transform myself into a penguin. So if you can imagine, I'm shrinking. I'm now this high. I weigh five kilograms. I'm black and white. I live in a very cold place. And my name begins with A. So what species of penguin am I? I live in Antarctica, I start with A, and I am an Adélie penguin. Here are Adélie penguins on their nests of stones at, in, in Antarctica. Male daily penguins display at their nest to attract females to come to the nest site. There are millions of daily penguins in Antarctica. They are the most common of the penguin species. Now for our second penguin today, I'm growing in height. I'm now about this high. I'm becoming the largest of the penguins. I weigh 25 kilograms. I also live in Antarctica. Now who am I? What species am I? I am a big penguin. I am the emperor penguin. Here are some adult emperor penguins and some emperor penguin chicks at Cape Washington in Antarctica. <coughs> emperor penguins breed on the sea ice, on the ice over the ocean. So when we went to work with the birds, our campsite was also on the sea ice. We were camping on ice that was floating on the ocean. Emperor penguins live in a very harsh environment. And here are some emperor penguins on a summer's afternoon in Antarctica. <laughs> now, for our third species, where I'm shrinking from the largest penguin to the smallest penguin. Now I stand just this high. I weigh one kilogram. I'm the penguin that lives around the New Zealand islands, including here in Wellington. Now I'm a small penguin, I am a small penguin, I'm blue, I'm the coral ra in Māori, or the little penguin, or the little blue penguin. And here are two 
beautiful korora with their blue plumage. Korora are active on land only at night, so the video was taken with an infrared camera. Similarly, here's a, another picture taken with an infrared camera, a pair of korora outside their nest box. Korora are the Wellington penguin. They nest around the Wellington coastline, sometimes underneath houses. They feed out into the harbour and out into Cook Strait. Korora are classified by the Depart Department of Conservation as at risk and declining. Korora are declining because of loss of habitat due to coastal development, due to predation by mammals such as stoats, and attacks by dogs. Just two weeks ago, a korora was killed on the waterfront by a dog not far from where we are now. There are also new threats to korora, such as a proposal for large-scale sand mining in the ocean off the coast south of Taranaki. I recently gave evidence about the adverse effects that sand mining would have on korora and other species of seabirds. It's a long way to go from New Zealand to work with penguins in Antarctica, and so I moved from Antarctica to working in New Zealand. I moved from working at the field camp, we can see there our tents on the ice in Antarctica, to Oamaru, this is Oamaru Harbour, and I moved to work with korora, the small blue penguins. This is the Awamaru blue penguin colony. Korora come ashore at dusk, they come up the rocks, they go past the viewing stand that you can see there on the right, and people get a chance to see the birds. The korora are coming ashore to their nest sites. Korora naturally nest in caves underneath rocks, they'll dig burrows in the sand. Korora will also nest in artificially provided nest boxes, and here at the Uamaru Blue Penguin Colony, I've circled in red some of the korora nest boxes. There are hundreds of korora nest boxes and hundreds of korora here in Uamaru. Now, we've got a closer up view to show two of the nest boxes. Whilst I was working in Uamaru, I started to look for a study site closer to home in the North Island. As I was looking for a study site, I became more and more aware of how the korora are declining. And my research perspective changed. It changed to focus on the question, how can we halt and reverse the decline of the korora? We can help the korora by trapping predators in areas where the birds are nesting. Or we can um, control dogs on beaches. A novel approach to korora conservation is to bring korora back to areas of coastline where they previously nested but have now gone. It is this approach that I'm taking on the Porirua coast, 30 kilometres north of Wellington. I've begun work with the Ngāti Tor community who live at Honguika Bay. Korora nested at Honguika in the past. We're going to bring back Korora. The title for our project is Korora and Coastal Kaitiakitanga. Kaitiakitanga means guardianship and arises from the Māori worldview of people and the environment. We're going to place nest boxes on the coastline and play korora calls at night to attract birds to come ashore and set up home, birds that would otherwise not have anywhere to nest. And here we have a korora nest box. So the nest box is made from wood. We have an entrance way and then a secure place for the birds to nest. We can lift the lid so that we can check the birds inside. Each nest box comes signed by its builder, and it comes with our whakatoki, or proverb. He korora, he toho oranga. He korora, he toho oranga. And this means the little penguin is the sign of life. In Matauranga Māori, traditional Māori knowledge, the health of the korora population is a sign of the health of the coastal marine environment. My understanding of kaitiakitanga has grown through reading and through discussion. Patricia Grace is a leading Māori author, and I've benefited greatly from reading her books such as Portiki, Cousins, and Baby No Eyes. Her writing provides for those of us who are not Māori 
insights into the challenges that have been faced and are still being faced by Māori in trying to exercise kaitiakitanga. Patricia Grace lives in the Hongoika community and I'm looking forward to talking with her about mataronga Māori, traditional Māori knowledge of the kōrora. Kaitiakitanga is a word that you might not be familiar with. Kaitiakitanga comes from two words. It comes from kaitiaki and tanga. Kaitiaki is guardian and kaitiakitanga is guardianship. I thought we could take the opportunity today to invite everyone to say kaitiakitanga. So what we're going to do is we'll take it in, in several parts. We'll st start with kaitiaki. So in a moment I'll count to two and then I'll invite you to say with me kaitiaki. So on the count of two, one, two, kaitiaki. Kaitiaki, how about that? And now we'll be able to say together tanga. So again on the count of two, one, two, tanga. All right, now we can put them together and we'll be able to say together kaitiaki tanga. So again, I'll count to two, one, two, kaitiaki tanga. How about that? A thousand people in downtown Wellington speaking in Te Reo. <laughs> so kaitiaki tanga, as I understand it, arises from the Maori worldview in which people are descended from Papa Tuanuku, Mother Earth. Animals and plants are also descended from Papa Tuanuku. So people are related to animals, people are related to plants, people are related to earth. The concept of kaitiakitanga thus arises from a whakapapa, or genealogy of interrelationships. Kaitiakitanga is about responsibilities that people have to animals, to plants, to the earth, in the same way as people have responsibilities to other people in their family. Kaitiakitanga arises from the notion of whanaunatanga, whanaunatanga, which is kinship and belonging, because relationships between people and the earth are whanaunatanga relationships. Kaitiakitanga is built on whanaunatanga. We can see that this is different from the, the Western worldview in which people are separate from the environment, in which the environment is there for us to use. When I first read about kaitiakitanga, I could see how well it fitted with my own values about caring for, about respecting the environment. I cannot be a kaitiaki because my whakapapa does not extend back to Papa Tuanuku. What I can do is to support those who are kaitiaki. When I began working with the small penguins, I was working with little penguins. As my perspective evolved and grew, I began to work with little penguins, brackets, korora. As my perspective continued to evolve, I began to work with korora, brackets, little penguins. In future, I'm going to work with korora, just korora. I've begun the process which will lead to recognition of korora as the official name for the species. Here in Wellington, we have kaka, big green parrots living in the city, and we have little penguins around the coastline. In future, we can have kaka flying in the sky and korora swimming in the water. I've mentioned our project um, korora and coastal kaitiakitanga. Just this week, we've been delighted to receive two years of funding from the Vision Maltaronga Fund of the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. We will be able to put into effect our novel approach of playing korora calls at night to attract birds to come ashore and establish a new population. For me, penguin conservation is about helping tangata whenua, the people of the land, to exercise kaitiakitanga over their local coastal marine environment. I now have the good fortune to be working with my iwi partners at Hongoika to help bring back their korora. Ka kite anō. Thank you.